In taking a look at the cat's mouth anatomy, we're going to see that their dental formula, the number of teeth that they have on the top jaw, is actually a little bit different than the bottom jaw. They have an upper dental formula of 6262, which means that we have six incisors, two canines, one, two, three, then the same on the other side, four, five, and six premolars, as well as in the very far back, one molar and another molar. For, so it's six, two, six, two. When you take a look at the bottom jaw, the bottom jaw is actually follows a different formula. That's a little bit different to see because we have the tongue in the way and everything else. But we're going to see six and two and then four and two. So again, they go in the order of incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Six, two, four, two instead. Since I have the tongue here, we can take a look at some other structures as well. The taste buds are modified taste buds in the front and true taste buds in the back. These taste buds are called papillae. Now we've all felt a cat lick uh, our skin or you see them grooming themselves all the time. The reason they can do that are these specialized papillae called filiform papillae. They don't use these for taste, they use them for grooming to actually get the hair. And you can hear as I run the probe across how spiky those are. Those are filiform papillae. Now the true taste buds go in the back and they're, uh, go in, they're specialized in different regions and you can see them all quite easily in, in, this, uh, in this shot. We can see further back are going to be the fungiform papillae. On the sides of the tongue in the, toward the back are going to be more leaf-like structures and these are going to be the foliate papillae. And in the very back, we're going to find our valate papillae. Okay, and the valate papillae are going to be the tallest, and they're down in the back of the uh, tongue at the very far regions. Now you can also see this little flap that's sticking up, and this is the epiglottis. What that does is it folds, if you're breathing, it folds in front of the esophagus, so air doesn't get down the esophagus going to the stomach. As you're eating, what that uh, epiglottis will do is close off the trachea so food doesn't get down to the lungs. You will also see, if I look around with the soft palate, just to the side of that, you'll see a little pouch right here. It almost looks like a grain of rice. And what that does, what that is, is the uh, palate and tonsils. We're going to find them in the soft palate themselves. You can see that the soft palate is soft and up towards the top you're going to be seeing the hard palate which is more rigid, it's got bone underneath. Those palate and tonsils are there to help fight bacteria and, and help with general immunity. They can swell and they can actually become inflamed and causing problems breathing. Some people will have their tonsils removed because of that reason. In humans you'll refer, hear them referred to as the adenoids as well. Uh, let's see, what else do we find? We find holding uh, holding the tongue, anchoring the tongue to the bottom jaw okay, of the mandible, you're going to find a flap of skin and that's called a, a lingual frenulum. Now lingual means tongue. Frenulum is just a, a flap of tissue that anchors it down. So any frenulum is anything that anchors something to another structure. In this case it's anchoring the tongue called the lingual frenulum. Now the, there's a chamber between, everybody's got this, a chamber between the gums and your cheeks. Okay. You can play chubby bunny, you can uh, chipmunk a bunch of food in between and all that. That little gap, that little chamber is called a vestibule. Okay. A chamber between the gum and the cheek itself. Now we have this a little bit more pronounced than the cat does. Um, a flap of tissue that actually holds the bottom lip and similarly the upper lip to the gum itself. Now because it is a flap of skin that anchors something else, it's called a frenulum. Because it's the lips, we call it a labial frenulum. You'll find it on the, on the cat in the bottom lip. And if I slide the cat so that you can see this, you'll see in the upper lip as well. Now remember, they've got a split lip, the philtrum, so it's a little bit wider. Um, but it will uh, have a flap of tissue anchoring up there as well. Another structure that we can see from this my thumb was sitting right over, are all these ridges. Ridges, a word for ridges is rugae. This indicates where the hard palate is. So the hard palate is indicated by where all these ridges are, and it is in fact hard 
to go through. And then we get to the soft palate, which is further back. You can't reach it with your own fingers because uh, that's usually where you hit your gag reflex. And that's the soft palate. Now, the last set of things that we need to go through is regions of the mouth. Now, when we're looking at this front part, especially where we've got the hard palate, this is going to be the first area where both air and food get in. Now, this is going to be your oral pharynx. Another region, if we go a little further back, and we go right to where, okay, here's my epiglottis. If I go right to here, you can see that this epi that there's actually a chamber that will lead up to the nose itself. This is the nasopharynx. Now you might find that weird person in class, somebody that you know at lunchtime, that will do the brain flossing with spaghetti noodles and basically put it in their mouth and shoot it out their nose and they can move it back and forth. The human body is set up that way so you can actually get air from the nose into the mouth area. You can breathe through your nose. You can actually, um, it actually ties to the mouth itself. I'm not suggesting brain flossing. You can get bacteria and sinus infections pretty easily by doing that, so stop doing it if you're doing it. Um, but if we get further back from there, the last region is the region right where that epiglottis lies, and that's going to be the laryngopharynx. This is the area where food actually gets sent along into the esophagus, or the, uh, likewise the region where air gets sent to the larynx, where, which is the voice box. So this is the laryngo pharynx region where food or particles are going to be uh, set on their separate ways. I guess there is one more structure I should point out um, and that is something that is unique to cats and other animals. We don't find it in the human. Everybody's got between uh, behind your incisors you've got a little nub that sits up just behind the incisors right in the hard palate but if you look closely there's a little opening to either side of that nub. You'll find that in the cat and other animals, but not in the human. What that is, is actually incisive ducts. Now those incisive ducts actually uh, help to enhance the sense of smell, so cats can actually smell through their mouth. We don't have that, obviously, um, but you'll see a lot of animals will actually sit there and breathe with their mouth open. Some of what they're doing is actually smelling as well.